Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University, and in this video I'm going to go over the Gabriel Amine Synthesis. In the previous video, in this uh, video sequence, I outlined how alkylation is a difficult strategy for amine synthesis. If you're alkylating ammonia or other amines, very often the product is more reactive than, than the original nucleophile. Overalkylation is possible. The Gabriel amine synthesis is a strategy for overcoming that. So we're going to make talk about making this amine uh, a primary amine. And the precursor for this primary amine is going to be the same kind of precursor. It's going to be an alkyl halide. It could be a chloride, bromide, iodide. And you can have some other you know, good leaving group there. Right. But instead of using ammonia as a leaving group, we're going to use something else. And so, here's what the Gabriel amine synthesis uses as a nucleophile. This nucleophile here is called thalamid, and it's uh, the imid, which is the, the nitrogen between two carboxylic acid, and it's formed from a carboxylic acid called um, phthalic acid, P-H-T-H. So it's an interesting spelling, and it's a little bit tricky uh, pronunciation, but the overall sequence of the Gabriel amine synthesis starts with thalamid, and we treat it with a base, like sodium hydroxide. And it turns out that because the conjugate base here is resonance stabilized, the pKa of the hydrogen attached to that nitrogen is 8.3. So it's acidic enough to be deprotonated by something like sodium hydroxide. And then we're going to react it with our uh, alkyl halide. And then the final sequence is a hydrolysis. So there are actually lots of ways we can do this, right? We can do acidic hydrolysis or basic hydrolysis or um, a way that some people sometimes is used to, to get the amine off is to react it with hydrazine. And I'll walk through um, all three of those approaches and what happens to the thalamid part of the structure. And the outcome of this is our amine, primary amine. This is not a good strategy for making secondary and tertiary amines. It's a good primary amine strategy. And as long as that alkyl halide is amenable, amenable to SN2 reaction, so primary alkyl halide, this strategy is going to work out. So now we're going to work through... Uh, this particular strategy using the alkyl halide that I have shown above to make the amine uh, that I've shown above. I'm going to keep all of this here though because this is the generic approach. So again we start with thalamid and the pKa of this hydrogen here is 8.3 and so we can deprotonate it with um, base like sodium hydroxide. And let's actually, because I want to draw a mechanism, let's make the hydroxide anion. And then this thalamid anion is resonance stabilized. we can delocalize that negative charge into either of the oxygen atoms through resonance. And that gives us a much more stable conjugate base, which means the, the uh, compound itself is more acidic. So, that's good. We can deprotonate it with sodium hydroxide. We don't have to resort to, to a super strong base like sodium amide or lithium disopropyl amide or, or whatever. Okay. Next thing we need to do then, 
this anion is a decent nucleophile, so all we need to do is react it with our appropriate alkyl halide, and this is the one we want to use. an SN2 reaction on the alkyl halide. And so the product after this step, and we have alkylated thalamid. So you just count my carbons, one, two, three, one, two, three, and it's the next one where the branch is. Okay. We have alkylated the thalamid. And then all we need to do is to convert this alkyl thalamid into the amine by doing something to, to the thalamid part of the molecule. Right. And I'm not drawing mechanisms for all of these steps because we have, um, I cover these things in other videos. So for example, if we're going to use aqueous acid, and the thalamid is kind of like a double amide. It's got a, a, in a nitrogen with a carbonyl group on each side. So the mechanism here, it's going to be lengthy because uh, it's acid catalyzed, but it's basically the amide hydrolysis mechanism happening on both parts of the imid functional group. And so the outcome, as far as that is concerned, is the diacid, which is phthalic acid, and the corresponding amine, which is the compound we wanted to synthesize. If we replace this with um, hydroxide, then we would get the same products basically, but the carboxylic acid would be deprotonated uh, and it would be in its anionic form. And again, this is simply basic uh, hydrolysis of an amide, which is again uh, a lengthy mechanism because it has to happen twice, but one I've covered in another video. Right, and then before we're done here, I just wanted to briefly mention that final strategy using hydrazine. And in the case of hydrazine, it's still another nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction, but instead of forming uh, thalamid or, or, or phthalic acid and, or, or its phthalate anion, you form this compound, which is called PHTH thalhydrazide. Uh, and one reason that hydrazine works here is because the product has a six-membered ring in it, and six-membered rings are reasonably stable. Um, hydrazine itself is a little bit more toxic, and so preferable, you know, in, in, my, you know, in my experience, I might rather do one of the aqueous hydrolyses if they work. But if you have, uh, if you're doing this on a substrate that has base-sensitive or acid-sensitive functional groups, the hydrazine approach may be a way to go. All right. So here is a way to make primary amines that avoids the overalkylation problem. It involves some extra steps, but sometimes you have to take a couple of extra steps to make sure that everything works exactly the way you want it. Thank you for watching.